Ten seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dazzle. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. The undying wakes. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Slada. Dire team pick. Templar Assassin. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <gasps> Dire team ban. <gasps> Radiant team pick.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Razor. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we are here for game number one of this best of three. Monkey vs. VP is the winner's bracket part of uh, Group A. I say winner's bracket, it's the winner's match, as uh, we are here for our Group Stage match. But uh, Monkey, um, the panel was saying they really like the draft until the Razor. What do you think? I is mean, the, you is, need... razor, is the Razor the thing? You needed a hero that can tank and just kind of run at people. Uh, at the same time, you've got a hero like Slaughter that has your initiation for you, so you need another source of damage aside from your tiny ra or your tiny whisk combination. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like it. I think the Visage pick does pretty well against all of Monkey Business's lineup, and at the same time, it provides a little hero that he's really comfortable with. But for me, it just depends on how well this mid matchup goes and if the Brood can actually just go around the map creating space, which yeah. is very likely. Broodmother is kind of that, yeah. like, she'll always be able to find that space. I kind of want to stick with the Razor in our discussion though, because it's something which monkeys, like, they beat, they beat EG when they played the Razor. And they're sitting there going, you know what, like, we understand this, we understand they picked this hero, we understand all the weaknesses of that hero. Like, they wouldn't pick this thing if they didn't feel comfortable that it was good against the VP lineup. Even when they're like, they last pickets, so they know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah, I agree, Toby Juan. I think it's a really good hero too. Okay. It tanks up really well for you, and it's one of the better heroes against Doom, just because if you decide to go for one of those like run at you builds, then you can tank the Doom, and it's a target that Doom doesn't want to tank. Yep. Beautiful. Why did you look at me when I when I look, <laughs> no. when I said your name, Toby? <laughs> it's just it's just the way you you know why you how you say it. What do you mean? It's my it's my Asian inflection, Toby Juan. It, it is it is definitely not. It is most definitely not. Let me just draw an eight. All right. 
So top rune should belong to Monkey here unless VP is going to try and contest it. And, uh, well, actually, VP are coming in quite heavily for this. And it might cause a bit of a conflict. Miracle already wants to start with the static link. He'll do it over on Illidan. Now Moon, he is right on top of that rune. Now who's going to be grabbing it? He gets a two-man crush and it does go to the slaughter as well as the tiny. But Moon, can he get out of this one? He's alive. FNG is actually down for the count. There's a quick salve coming in, which was so burned much damage on the slaughter. On miracle. But they just keep fighting through. He's stolen 21 extra points of damage. He's got the moose speed now. There's no soul assumption. And there's that moose speed. You say kicking him. He's at a 13 life. It's a lucky number for him right now. Running further and further away, but it's not lucky enough. The Razor will pick up one of the kills. And that is going to be a 2 0 advantage to a team that's already running potentially very aggressive dual lanes. Plus, the Tiny Dick tiny grabbed that rune on the bottom lane. That is surprising considering that it was actually VP that set that trap. You would figure that they had the better give, but I mean, that was just really well fought by Monkey overall. They understood that as long as they held the line and with the slaughter so close to so many heroes that they were going to get a multiple hero uh, slithering crush off. But really well played overall by Monkey. VP definitely didn't see that coming. They figured that if there was any sort of aggression, they could stimmy it by just having the decay coupled with the visage soul assumption. They were wrong. Man, God really, he's relying on pure refraction to do this damage in the mid. Because he's not backing up for Miracle. Miracle just goes for the Static Link and keeps removing like 50 points of damage. And Miracle's already got boots. He's got one of the first kills in the game. At the same time, he's got an assist too. Neither of these heroes, like, if I remember correctly, uh, were able to get the Bounty Rune. It was actually uh, correct. the Correct, it was Slaughter and, yeah. and Tiny. So that means that hurts the G actually a lot more than it hurts the Razor, just because the Razor has that kill backing him up. <laughs> okay, let's let's look towards a, a lane which maybe VP will have more success in. Apart from that, okay, the oh, toss from Notar nice. could just move back into a nice position. FNG is going to cop so much damage for this. Luckily for him, he has got four decays, two stolen from both Wisp and Tiny. But how's Phobos meant to do down here? Like, is this lane going the way he's hoping early on? Rude doesn't oh, quite damn. lose any lane, just because of the principle of the heroes just to disrupt the offlane as much as possible, and force two heroes to be here at all times. Uh, you might die once in a while, but aside from that, you can kind of recover a lot easier than most of the offlane heroes can. Just because you can use the enemy jungle, and you'll just naturally be down here the entire time. The yeah. good part about having a Tiny Wisp, though, is that even if they decide to go for a game, they'll just come back at the end of it and not really give you anything to work with. But for me, it's just, it's more this middle lane matchup. G has to do well against Miracle. He's doing decently. Like, they're even CS at the moment, but Miracle keeps doing this. That'll change. That that blue wave. Oh, it just makes it so hard to CS. Yeah. Like, even with that Refract Charge, he's barely at even now. At least keeping up. This uh, gets scattered at FNG. It is during the daytime still, but Fly is making his move over, and that courier is being very much protected. There'll be a flying courier now, and it'll go over the tree line. So, safety. Fly will be able to find FNG here inside the jungle. But this is a double damage room versus Decay, and now Tombstone. Fly trying to be more of a man here. He's still got more of the DD, and with one more attack, he can do the work. Shallow Grave will buy him the time to do that too. The problem is the Decay and these undying minions just chasing after him, and Fly doesn't want a bar of it. He's going to TP out. He realized he would die if he said any longer. But he blows the first Tombstone and reveals the, ro the uh, rotation. While on bottom lane, it's uh, Phobos just getting beaten down by no tell. The avalanche toss, not enough to bring this uh, Broodmother within risk of death. I'm actually surprised that they decided to go for that kill and they even popped the dust. Uh, I guess you can kind of... The argument that you got some decent harass off, but at the same time dust. That's about 90 gold down the drain that you're not going to get back and you can't really afford to lose those charges when you're not going for kills. And does your harassment even work? Like when you when you got level 2 webs off of Phobos, he's just going to regen it up. Exactly, and he's got the soul ring available for him too. So when it comes to natural regen, he's doing just fine. Broodlings should be able to get the sentry. Actually, no tail gets the tango eaten at the last second, but as I was saying, it's just, it's not really a lane that harass matters much in. And I completely agree with you, Toby. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kill or nothing, basically. But at the same time, no tail. By harassing into this brood, Mother Phobos is being at least a little bit more tentative about jumping into the lane. And having the Sentry Ward battle as well goes the way of no tell. Because it means he can just farm up all these spiderlings. Like his CS is 27 for 4 at the moment. That's looking good. Okay, Miracle. La troublesome. He's oh, gonna steal the hits. damage. And now how much damage? 
It might be four more hits at this right. Miracle steals 105 oh, points of damage regen too. and pops a regeneration rune. They haven't gone through the defensive refraction, charges the plants of field, pulls back in, but does do a little bit more. Damn god, actually he stuck around a little bit longer. That's still 105 solid damage, two hits going to god. Dropping That's... him so low. That is so brutal. Using pretty much all of your mana and your last hit potential just to go for that kill. They're about to have a crack. With the crush on Doom, they're gonna keep him out and then into the sprint. Fly does still have Shallow Grave and that's why FNG has to do this block. There's no crush available, even with the 5 six charges fly. Okay, there is a level death. That'll give you a cancel and Doom able to get that last swing in before Fly was able to get back in range of that tier 1 tower, or at least the safety range of that tier 1 tower. And I really like that Illidan side skill at that point. Securing himself a kill, but meanwhile at bottom lane, they actually do get a kill. Even without the help of the tower, that's a that's a 2-3 combo, yet it was still enough to kill off the brood. It must be a very injured brood mother before that began. Yeah, that is quite surprising to me. Uh, he is doing some damage at this bottom lane, and he's actually dipping quite low. He doesn't have that regen, 29 HP, but just exits the web. Should be okay. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be, though. He'll survive. Luckily, no tell as well, keeping his cool, because he didn't then burn the south, which he had in his hands. Allows him to regenerate up to a point that he can stand on the lane here with Phobos. That sentry ward's going to time out in three seconds' time, which uh, is definitely not, definitely not what he wants to have up against Broodmother. But is there a new one coming in from Crit? No. I actually don't have detection on Crit anymore. I really like that Illidan decided to go for this armor creep too. It makes it so much harder for them to get any sort of offensive potential on the stop lane. Not that they really had any on monkey business anyways, but it means that even if Moon decides to hit that level 6, it's not going to do too much. Yeah. And at the same time, they're making their move, but this is a really tanky top lane. Yeah. You're not going to be able to cut through both another Shadow Wave and the Shallow Grave. There's no point in being able to harass that out. And I like that Monkey Business constantly go to some sort of aggressive dual lane. It just feels like it sort of fits their playstyle. Yeah. It just seems to like rotate around this whole, we just win by lane presence alone. And the dual lanes allow everyone else then to rotate into this, this mid kind of timing attack be it onto heroes or be it onto towers. And monkey business just sets the pace so fast with how well they do in the lane. Uh, relocate coming up towards the top lane. It's going to bring in Notel. Looking for Illidan. Not the perfect avalanche. Just hoping to hit Il uh, Lil as well. That means Crit and Notel will be going back down the bottom lane. So beautiful about the combination because they just do a surprise gank. Don't even lose the tower at bottom because here they are again. Yep. Robots doesn't have that time to attack. It's the beauty of the Wisp Tiny, isn't it? Like, normally when you rotate like that, then the Broodmother's attacking into your tower. I guess exactly. it leaves a little bit of chip damage, but Miracle? Okay. I have the Storm being triggered. He's already triggered his double damage rune. He's searching for God in the tree line, who will reveal himself, but God is using the Fog of War perfectly. He makes it so this ulti of race doesn't achieve anything. In fact, he's coming over just to look at the Ancients as well, to check and see what's going on. He's got to be careful. He actually doesn't have Melt quite yet, but he's banking uh, on Miracle not actually fighting this, but Miracle, so much damage! <laughs> oh! oh my! The Tombstone, FNG did not have Soul Rift. Miracle will still die here, however, with the rotation in from the Broodmother helping the Undying to ensure the kill. But that's still a big kill coming back the way of the Broodmother and the Undying. I'm so surprised that G decided to stick around for that, because that's the, st the strength of the Razor, is that suddenly you're thinking to yourself, two seconds ago I did half of his health with that Refraction hit, and now I'm doing nothing. And all of a sudden you've given up 150 damage. And then on top of that, the Razor had a DD rune. Yep. And G just got way too aggressive there. Ends up losing his life for it. Goes back to the mid lane, however, and uh, is still taking a while before Razor can return. But Fly's soaking up the damage in the mean, uh, the uh, experience in the meantime. And now Miracle has returned to the lane. How's that bottom lane looking? So No Talent's already starting his attack on this bottom tower. Very easy to do even before Aghanim set it, just because you've got that toss. And with the Wiz Spirits as well, they can burn through. Okay, that's a lot of spiderlings to give over, and also a wonderful animation bug. Yeah, there was... Add that to the list. I mean, they also tossed up a brown dot into the air. Yeah, I don't know what the... I, I'm guessing it was a spider that just splattered on the ceiling. Gross, I don't like spiders, Toby. I love them. You're from Australia, it makes sense. Yep. I would have a spider as a pet. Can you not in Germany? I probably could. Oh, flight! Yeah, he's on the run out of here, but Phobos, he doesn't really have much more to give. 
And there's a Shadow Wave as well as a Shallow Grave, so it's pretty difficult. And while they're doing this, while they're chasing after the support hero, No Tail finished up the bottom tower. Now, I kind of want to see No Tail's build, because I know he likes to rush into the Aghanim Scepter, especially when he's got a Wisp behind him. But is this the game to do that? I think so. You've already got a lot of initiating presence. You could decide to go for the Blink Dagger and then just start the fight immediately. Uh, maybe force some inopportune dooms by Illidan. You could kind of get away with that this game. Oh, FNG. So much damage. The last attack from Crit's gonna arrive. But the Avalanche toss plus the extra chip. Miracle made it so God's attention was pretty well focused towards the mid lane. And now they split themselves up, the so Crit's a very simple tether away. Illidan can't reach him in time for the Doom, even with face boots. And God instantly moves over to take this ancient stack. He understands that monkeys will not let them have this easily, even though they can't clean it themselves. Yeah, monkeys is just gonna put the pressure on to this mid lane. How much is here though? Like, you're bringing so many heroes in here. Like, it's practically your entire team, apart from Phobos, who's on the bottom lane feeding spiders. Uh, and now this gives Moomiander all the space in the world to get solo experience. As well as being able to get that, like, the money for the Blink Dagger. Lil also just lost both of his familiars in mid lane. He doesn't have the cooldown up on them, too. This is a really unfortunate scenario for him, because usually you can kind of say that, well, that's okay, because I can just resummon them. Mm -hmm. But it's the gold on top of losing them for a full 90 seconds, and it really cuts the effectiveness of the hero a lot. So most of the time, you want to be able to soak up XP in one lane, and then use the birds to kind of just... No tell, he has map. that Blink. Avalanche tosses in, and that Templar Assassin just disappears. FNG's also out a little bit too far. All the balls connecting apart from one, and that might just be... Okay, it was two, and two was enough to slap him down. The Tombstone will also be brought down. No one dying to heal it up. You've lost your Visage. The Visage actually died back behind the Tier 2 tower. That's how far out he was. And Phobos, if he sentry. runs, if he runs east, oh, he's there. Oh, he ran in. The avalanche and the will still be there. And Phobos, he'll end up oh, dropping. No. They trigger the dust very late after his death, but it's still the kill going the way of monkeys and this mid tower to follow. I mean, just look at that ward coverage by monkey business right there. There was only one spot that DK Phobos could have ran, and he didn't choose the right one. That was not the correct place to run. I'm just blown away by how how well they run this with timing combination, though. And I think it is in large part to how well No Tail understands the combination mm -hmm. and how he's supposed to move. Because I mean, he played that hero for almost like two years when he was on the side of Fnatic. He played Wiss every time, and it's really got to help your understanding of how you want your tiny to move, what you want out of your tiny, and credit to Crit as well for always following through. But it's also how quickly they got this. Like it's it's the presence of mind. Like okay, so Nortel got a lot of farm on the bottom lane. So he was able to get the very early blink dagger. That timing was perfect for the uh, for the timing of then VP trying to take out their ancients, or at least finish their ancients. And they still had that presence of mind to know that the TA was over there doing what she was doing. Obviously, the observer what helped a hell of a lot. Dyer's top tower. A lot of map control right now by Monkey Business, though, and they're not going to give it up anytime soon. When you've got a tiny wisp and you're this far ahead, then a 12 running. minute blink dagger on Slardar. Don't know how Moon was able to do that. I guess it was just because the pace of the game, and this is what we were talking about. And EG struggled with this early on. The pace that uh, Monkey Business kind of lay on top of you so is so difficult. No doubt's about to jump himself in, looking for the big avalanche. Catches out three heroes. The plasma is in there too. It's not there just yet by Slada. Now will on the Templar Assassin, but the Tombstone is down. They cannot deal with it. The Tomb is on the Razor with no ultimate available. They at least Shallow Grave on Slada, but Miracle is just so damn low. Here comes the heal in one second time. There's the heal, and it buys him just enough time to survive. But you've still lost the Tiny who bought back. The Wisp and Slada ended up dropping, and No Tail, he's just hunting under after Ill. The top He's got the with damage. It's gonna be enough to get the kill on the Doombringer and FNG and God. They've abandoned Roshan while Broodmother he chased after the Dazzle, who could not keep up with Nortel. Nortel's back up with his mana. Got himself that combo. And you can see God going in for the Ancients. He's just waiting here with the Observe Ward up, watching the rotations. I'm just saying they're not doing Roshan anymore. I think they're just hoping to bait out Nortel, but they're gonna go for it! With the plasma field, that's a lot of damage, one more punch! 19 life on God, he's still on the run out of here, Miracle! Oh, he needs the movement speed and he got a haste rune! The Wisp will relocate in with the Spirits! Able to find the pickoff. It's like an 8 minute engagement, both teams just battling it out. Neither side really wants to give up anything. Moon Meander here too, they could go for this Roshan. The damage is pretty low, but with the amplified damage... 
It might make it easier for them, but at the same time, everyone from VP is ready, but no tail <laughs> going after the kills instead. I think they're more concerned about what Phobos is going to be up to. DK Phobos has had just such a good game. He had a triple kill there. He almost has that Orchid available with the phase boots. Monkey's just going to walk straight back in. Dangerous man. They don't have a sentry down for the radiant side. They have dust, but they don't have a sentry. They've got a bird in here and a lot of spiders, but I don't actually think... A no tell. He just doesn't care. He jumps up after Lil with the Wiz coming up with the Spurs. They're going to find the kill in the ball. They could get Illidan here too. They're going to find Illidan. He'll get the Doom off on crit versus support only. FNG wants to help out. The Doomstone is dropped. Miracle will quickly mop this up. And crit, the Shallow Grave will try and keep him alive. They have to get these spiders off him. He needs a couple of seconds longer, and he just does not have it. If they could get G here, though, this would be such a good trade for them. The Avalanche toss, they've got it, man. Templar Assassin is down. The Doom is down. The advantage is they're so low, they just keep on respawning, but... Man, this Templar Assassin is zero for four. There's no momentum whatsoever coming in for God. I mean, the speed that Monkey Business is playing at is just so fast. They immediately lose three heroes. No Tail buys back. He thinks to himself, okay, we'll just continue the fight. It's whatever. The relocate comes in, and then all of a sudden, everybody from Monkey Business is respawned. And they're just picking off heroes one by one as VP just kind of filter through into that Roche pit and say to themselves, we can't give this up, but... I mean, they just fought that so improperly. You don't want to just filter heroes one by one. You want to make a group effort if you're going to go for that assault. Mm -hmm. You have to trust that monkey business. It's going to take them some time to go for that Roshan. And you have vision with the spiders. So there's no reason to have to commit so hard around that Rosh pit. But time and time again, they just kept going in one by one. And they just allowed themselves to get picked. Oh. It's, it's kind of it's kind of the way we what we've seen monkey play up against EG earlier today as well. Like they just forced their pace game. And it, I, do, do I dare want to bring up what happened at the tier one tower on the top lane with EG coming in one by one? This felt very very similar. And I'm wondering if it's just this pressure style that monkeys gets to play, where they understand the time and they understand when VP and when EG were ready to fight, and then they push it just a couple of minutes earlier, where v, where you sit on the edge, they're saying, "Am I actually good to fight?" You think you are, so you just go for it. Middle lane looks like Illidan. The blink, crush, relocates coming in as well, and Illidan he gets brought down with the avalanche toss. Oh my! Visage done dying. They just disintegrate. What a play by monkeys. They are just moving perfectly across this map they are baiting vp into the fights or taking the best chances they can find a small advantage and now they're even oh, buying geez, god as too. well the observed ward was over in the dire jungle there's one your avalanche the from refractor. no tell he just waits it out but it's going to be too long they're taking out the towers anyway brute to take out the bottom and the rest of monkeys to take out the mid there's something so satisfying toby about watching a whisk get tossed into the air and just kind of crush two heroes on the way down it's just so comical because you think it's like the weakest thing in the world and it lands and it deals 300 damage. But monkey mention, again. Wiss does have damage of his own too. No he that's, doesn't. That's, that's a level 4 spirit man. It's 100 damage per ball. Come on man. He's also got 7 urn charges. I, I think he's just forgotten about it. They don't really, they're never really losing fights in the beginning anyways. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for him to use it. They don't need it to sustain pushes, like they're fine. And, at 18 minutes in, No Tail has an Aghanim Scepter completed. And Wisp along has with a it. full mech as well. Does he really? He has a full mech completed 18 minutes in on Crit. You talk about No Tail understanding the Wisp matchup. Crit is playing it perfectly as well. Now, VP, they're attending some kind of bait. It's just going to turn to a tower trade off. But you're trading up against an Aghanim's Tiny. He's probably going to be very happy to go high ground here. They're going to just keep going, and they yep. understand that this is a lot easier for them to do. It's gonna take time for VP to get back. Does everyone have TP scrolls? Yep. They're all coming dying, back. But he's already in base. Yep. And one one swing almost takes out that entire dire creep wave. The tier that tower is uh, tier three tower is almost gone. God refraction is up, so he was able to blink himself away and avoid the damage from the avalanche tosses. The undying minion is tossed towards the uh, towards the doombringer. No tower will back out. They got what they wanted. Tombstone is burnt. They didn't use any major abilities. That's fine. And they've got too much armor anyway, they could actually run- Okay, the, the, the weave is wearing out now. With the Aegis available, you just kind of wait out the tombstone, re-engage half a second later. Down. And it looks like they want to make sure that this bottom tower is kind of secured. The Wisp is here in case any shenanigans happen at top, but they just disengage. <laughs> it, it, just, it, it is that disengage that way, it's like, 
it doesn't feel like a proper disengage. If you leave three players up inside the dire, the dire jungle, you can just relocate in no tell. Wisp will do everything he needs to in a very short space of time, and they basically win the game in the space of five seconds. They've just got so much map control right now that they don't have to worry about any of these individual skirmishes from their teammates. They know that the Wisp Tiny can always be there, and that constant ever-looming threat is what's keeping VP on their toes. Because normally what would happen is, if you're at a numbers advantage like they were in a 3v5 fight, no matter how far behind you are, you take that fight. But yep. because you have a Tiny and a Wisp on the other side, you can't really anticipate taking that fight. You kind of have to think to yourself, yeah, it's only two heroes that we see right now, but it could potentially be five instantly. Yep. Miracle, trouble for him at the moment. And this is and what we're talking about. The 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 beam? Beam he called out three, the reload kit coming from behind with the avalanche toss. They can actually bring down with the cleave three of the heroes. VP, this is not the dream right now. They're gonna lose Phobos as well. The soul survivor is gone. Up on the top lane, probably about to try and push out that top lane so at least. He doesn't, well, actually, no, he's still going to lose it because they can push in the middle lane and rotate up towards the top and take out the racks. The TP, however, is coming up. So it's Slada, the Blink Crush, out of time. God blinks himself into the tree line and out to safety, but it doesn't matter. No tell only needs himself to take out that top racks, but he does have friends. And they're even going to find the familiars on the way back in. If they can bring these guys down before they get the, cr the crush, there goes one of your stuns. The avalanche keeps Lil away. Without that Aegis available. Monkey is just kind of thinking to themselves, let's wait it out a little bit, but... Why take the risk? You've got 3k on no tell, you can probably buy half of that Assault Kuros already. Exactly, and... It seems so prophetic. At the same time, we were talking about how if VP decided to take that 3v5 fight because they think they have numbers, mm -hmm. the Wiz Tiny just comes from behind, but... That was more just set up by the fact that Moon had a beautiful setup. That 3-man crush into that 3-man uh, toss avalanche, everyone just instantly exploded. And VP have to worry about that more and more. Man, they're gonna worry about it even more. Like you could, you're getting a Shiva's guard almost done on the razor. He's got most of it back at the base right now. You're getting a crimson guard over on the slaughter. Actually, applying any level of damage is going to be difficult. And Tiny is now going in for, well, you could assume it's going to be a butterfly. But I got this inkling feeling that he's looking towards knee blade. Just an inkling. Just an inkling. It's it's only because of something I heard over lunch. <laughs> Alright, so... But that's Moon Meander's uh, influence. Moon Meander's a clown. <laughs> I love him, though. It, it, that was that was his uh, his plan with uh, Prophet before, by I'm the way. I'm so glad that he changed his name. I was like, Moon Me and her? But he loves his girlfriend, I can't hate him for that. Yeah. Alright, so VP. Cleaning up bottom, but again, monkeys. They're grouping up on the top. What's coming out in the curry at the moment? So it's uh, it's not the end of the Shivas. Miracle still. Uh, she's gonna sell something to pick up the plate, Mal. And yep, there it is. So the Shivas guard is out. They are so geared up right now. Everybody yep. from Monkey. I can't even believe the the pace that they're setting right now in this game. Just fight after fight. I understand it's, it's, the... a, it's amazing too, because it's actually bringing back the old classic push strats. It's not even for me. If you, it's less about just a straight up push and more just the fact that. They control the map so well with the type of heroes that they pick. When they take the Ember Spear, when they take the Meepo, when they're willing to just play that Beastmaster mid, even though not a lot of teams do. It's just about setting the tempo, controlling the mid game, controlling the jungle, and they're here as five. Miracle. Is Miracle really the target you want to go on though? Uh, no, he's not. They doom up, and there's a three man crush from Moon. The relocate will allow them to disengage. And well, Notal wants them to group up. You could throw down sentries all you want. The obs are down as well, but Tiny's ready to jump in in probably two, one. Okay, he just goes in with the avalanche toss and Moon to follow up. Illidan's completely crushed up and controlled. Then it doesn't even matter if you get a Doom target off. They've lost two, they've lost three. They're gonna lose God. They may actually lose even more than this. The Doombringer was able to get himself in the tree lines. They've lost the game. It's 27 to seven is the end score as Monkey setting one a hell of a pace here in MLG. More than a kill a minute so far for them. I mean, it's just so hard to keep up with that kind of style where <laughs> behind early and monkey business, they just choke you out. They don't really allow you opportunities to get back into the game. They're never going to split up on the map. We saw early on in the tournament where they played against EG and you saw that moment where crit was like that. That was like the one time I saw one of their individual players get caught off. Yep. But for the most part, I mean, they just move together as a unit so well. Everyone's always there to back themselves up. Every single time they took a fight, at worst it was 3v5 with a tiny wisp ready to come in.